Fueled by a booming economy and ever-expanding urban population, China has built more skyscrapers in the last 30 years than the United States did in the entire 20th century. With relaxed planning regulations and near limitless capital, cities across the country have transformed from small regional centers into some of the most densely packed metropolises on our planet. But while this phenomenon saw the construction of some of the world's tallest buildings, a decree by China's central government in April 2020 has brought the country's record-breaking skyscraper boom to an end. On the 27th of April 2020, China's Ministry of Housing and Urban Rural Development issued a notice that introduced measures to, in its own words, further strengthen the management of urban and architectural features. The document, which we've translated from its original Chinese, restricts the blind planning and construction of super-high-rise skyscrapers and states that new buildings over 500 metres in height are not allowed to be built. The notice also heavily restricts the construction of any buildings over 250 metres in height, except where absolutely necessary, and where permission is granted, those towers will be subject to intense reviews by the firefighting, earthquake and energy saving authorities. In addition, local governments are now required to tighten the approval process for towers taller than 100 metres, protect natural areas and historic buildings, and appoint chief architects to ensure that any new architecture better represents Chinese culture. The policy also bans plagiarised or copycat architecture, a controversial and head-turning trend which has seen a number of the world's most famous buildings replicated across China in recent years. Despite no specific reasoning for the changes, the momentum for introducing these rules has kind of been building for some time. Over the last three decades, China has developed at breakneck speed, racing to construct buildings and infrastructure that enable and support its economy, house its vast population, and position it as a new superpower on the world stage. That context gave rise to some challenges, including the construction of the 632-metre Shanghai Tower, a megatall skyscraper that did its job of putting China on the map while claiming the title of the world's second tallest building, but that ultimately required state funding to complete, before struggling to lure tenants with its inefficient floor plan. With projects taller than 300 metres often taking more than five years to complete, the added financial risk that comes with buildings of that scale is also thought to have played a part. Economic tides can easily shift over such long construction periods, leaving developers without a profit and with most Chinese developers and contractors being at least partly state-owned, the government is often left to take on the financial burden of large schemes. In extreme cases, like the long-delayed 596-metre Golden Finance 117 in Tianjin and the 476-metre Wuhan Greenland Centre, projects are placed on indefinite hold, their unfinished edifices looming large over cities. China's cooling view of skyscrapers fits with a broader global trend of concern around extremely tall buildings, which many feel are now relegated to vanity projects for the world's elite, a form of security for foreign investments, or attempts to break new records and actually do very little for cities overall. The new policy tackling skyscrapers and look-alike buildings could also be a response to negative press around the rest of the world, including from our channel. As China continues to develop, focus is shifting onto placemaking, with large master-planned districts seeking to create more economical, green and beautiful cities that emphasise people and practicality. Since the first skyscrapers rose in the 1880s, building tall has been the way that a country announces its arrival on the world stage. As we saw in the US and Middle Eastern markets, this often starts with an intense period of speculative and rapid development 
before regulations, economics and new realities direct projects down more modest paths. While it will be some time before we understand how strict authorities will be with enforcing these regulations, the reduction of the Shuzhou Hungam Centre from 729 to 499 metres could be a sign that the height of China's skyscraper boom is now behind us. If you enjoyed this video and would like to get more from the definitive video channel for construction, subscribe to the B1M.